everyone. Welcome back to another one of our market update videos. This is our longer form video where we talk about everything that's just happened in the previous month in the Arizona real estate market. We review the factoids and we talk about like what's happening. So if that's of interest to you, stay tuned. We've got a lot to cover in this month's video. Hey everyone, I'm Katie Evans, owner and lead agent of the Living 48 Real Estate Team. Welcome back to another one of our market updates. So glad to have you back for this video. Um, we are coming into our Arizona summer, summer months, which means it's getting hotter around here. Most of the time, that means the Arizona real estate market is starting to heat up and we are seeing some very interesting trends in the Arizona real estate market right now. So again, this is a longer form video. We're going to really, really talk about some of the numbers that we're seeing, some of the crazy things that are happening and how it is affecting the Arizona real estate market. So let's go ahead. I'm going to share my screen for you guys so that you can see exactly what we are talking about in regards to our Arizona real estate numbers. So Looking at May factoid numbers, so this video is being filmed in June of 2024, but we are looking back to some of the May numbers so that we can show you how the month wrapped up and, and what happened. So our supply number went up from 2.5 months to 2.6 months. So a very, very small adjustment there, but that also trended over into our inventory from 90 days to 92 days. We're going to talk about what that means to you in a minute. Our active days on market, however, went down. And this was a substantial jump down from 86 days to 78 days on market. Now, what does that mean? That could mean that agents finally figured out and were smart enough and stopped putting their listings from active into UCB under contract, but accepting backups where the days on market continue to count. And they went straight from active to pending where the day count stops. Could be that, could be some luxury listings sold off could mean a lot of things, but that is a that's an interesting number to watch, and we're going to continue to watch that. Our closed days on market, though, stayed very, very similar, but we did do a slight drop from 65 days on market to 64 days on market. So that was from listing to closed. Um, that is the average number there. Our active price per square foot, this number went down. Um, and I'm grateful it went down because in April the video that we filmed in May, our April numbers were, we were hitting some like all time record highs, which you guys know when we start doing that kind of stuff, we get a little nervous here in real estate. So our active price per square foot went down, but is still sitting at $365.99 a square foot, which is rather high. And you can see that in comparison to our sold price per square foot, which is $297.46 cents per square foot. Our average sold price was $596,660 and our median stayed exactly, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. It went down just a titch um, to $450,000. Those are our last 30 day numbers. Now, if we roll over into our last 12 month numbers that you can see at the bottom of the screen, what I want you to see there is that our average sold for the last 12 months the reason that it, that is yellow is that is another, again, all-time record high. That was $576,132. Our median sold over the last 12 months, that one stayed exactly the same as the last month when we tracked it. That is $440,000. And then finally, um, our appreciation. Now let's talk about these appreciation numbers because this is very, very interesting. Our 12-month appreciation price per square foot, um, the number went up. So our appreciation over the last 12 months has been 4.1%. We're going to spend a little bit of time on this right now. Okay. And our last 30 days, the number is red, but you did not lose any appreciation. Last month, we appreciated at 4.9% rather than the month before. Let me see if I can get that. Oh, no, it doesn't want to switch on my slides. But rather than the last month, which was at a 5.1%, I believe. 
So you didn't like, that's not a bad number. It just is lower than it was last month when we looked at it. Okay. So quick little um, reminder here for you guys on appreciation and what percentages we like to see in the real estate world. Anything between four and 6% in Arizona is the historical healthy appreciation rate. Those are what we want to see. So if you recall, even just a few years ago, we were like 20% and like ridiculous appreciation rates that I, if you go back and watch all my videos, I was really nervous about, I was like, this is not sustainable. This is not really good. This is not healthy. This is not normal. This is, you know, all those things. And so we are back into healthy, normal appreciation. This is where we want it to be. This is sustainable. This is good. All right. So. That's the month factoids. If you guys have any questions on those, that is, um, please feel free to reach out. However you're consuming this, I, I would love to hear your questions and let's let's break those down even further. But we are going to, um, let's just have a quick chat. All right, quick chat here. What's going on in Arizona real estate market? So if you watch our weekly market in a minute videos, you're going to see that we are saying it's balanced market. It's a balanced market. It's a balanced market. What does that mean for you? A balanced market basically means that if we have about three months worth of inventory, the seller doesn't have a distinct advantage. See my hair. The seller does not have a distinct advantage over the buyer and the buyer does not have a distinct advantage over the seller. If we see from zero to two months worth of inventory, typically that indicates that you're in a seller's market. Three months, balanced market. Four plus months, that's going to be buyer advantage and they're going to be able to control the shots there. All right. So when we're talking about our supply number, again, this is an overall market number. Overall, this is all of Arizona. Okay. The challenge with real estate is it is hyper local. It is micro markets. It is neighborhood and niche specific. It is crazy. So while I'm giving you these factoids that are big, big numbers with everybody included in them, your neighborhood, your property, it's going to be different. All right. So as a whole, Arizona is playing in a balanced market right now. We've got just under three months of inventory, I'm sorry, of supply. But if we look at our inventory number, we are at 90 to 92 days. We are in a balanced market. All right. Here is the nuance. The nuance is, is that we have sub markets within that market. So I predominantly work in the East Valley, um, but I've got numbers for the entire Valley. But let's just for, for illustration, purposes, I'm going to share some East Valley numbers with you. So when I'm talking about the East Valley cities, I'm talking about um, Ahwatukee, Chandler, Chandler Heights, Gilbert, Mesa, Tempe, Santan, Queen Creek, um, Patch Junction, those, not, those, those cities, okay? So in our zero to $250,000 price range, uh, we are currently sitting at 433 properties. 115 of those sold in May, and that leaves us with 3.63% or uh, months worth of supply. So that particular market right now, which is odd because that is the lower range market, uh, is actually weighted a little bit towards the buyer. Still balanced, but weighted a little bit towards the buyer. Why? Could be that some of these properties are only available to be sold for cash. Um, Investors don't particularly want them. Maybe they are 55 plus, maybe they are mobile homes. There's a lot of reason, but that number is sitting higher. When we get into our bread and butter though, in the East Valley, our 250 to 400 and then our 400 to $500,000 homes. Um, yeah, we have 1.26 months of inventory, which is a total seller's market and 1.24 months worth of inventory which again is a total seller's market. Even the 500 to 600,000 uh, price point in the East Valley cities, we're looking at 1.74 months worth of inventory. So still weighted towards the, the seller and the seller's market there. So 
just throwing that at you because I do want you to understand that every neighborhood, every market, every city is going to be slightly different. And if you're looking or if you're listening to the national news or you're listening to even just big picture news for Arizona, you're probably not getting the accurate information for your property. Okay. So let's talk about a couple of things. Available listings. June, when we track the numbers going into June, is starting off with 18,289 available units. That's 34 units less than we had last month. Um, and it's one of many signs that we're kind of in a balanced market. Uh, so that is, that's what we're seeing. If your agent hasn't been talking to you about assumable mortgages, they need to be talking to you about that. Um, that is starting to become a bigger and bigger selling point for buyers right now. You've got Mr. Seller a loan or an interest rate of 4%. You've got this balance. Is that assumable by the new buyer? You no longer are responsible for it. New buyer can take on that portion of the mortgage at that rate and then get another mortgage at the higher rate um, for the the remainder of what we've all agreed upon is the sales price. It, it's it's a very, very important conversation to be having. It is what's going to help with some affordability over in the next little while. So our assumable loans that are listed as assumable in the MLS right now uh, is now up to a total of 384, okay? There's a lot more out there that are assumable. assumable. VAs are assumable. Any government back loan is assumable. And there are several conventional that would be assumable as well. Your agents are just not doing a really great job of educating or understanding what an assumable loan is, how it works, and um, the pros and the cons of it, because there are pros and there are cons as well. Um, so that's a thing. Let's see, May put up 8,981 new listings, and that was actually up uh, 101 units month over month. And it is, but it is well off from our all time high, which was in 2022. Our all time high was 11,292. Our normal for May is um, some somewhere about nine and a half, like 9,500 between nine and 10,000. That's normal. So we're really close to normal. So again, another indication that we are in a sort of overall balanced market. Okay. Under contract, uh, we started June with 8,211 under contract. That's down about 668 or 8% month over month. Um, do, 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 do. These numbers actually make June the lowest June for contracts since 2014. Okay. So that's, uh, that's an interesting thing. Let's see. Oh, you guys always want to know about what are our distressed and our foreclosure numbers. There are currently in the MLS 61 distressed properties and our pre foreclosures 15. People have equity. There are, there are very few of them out there. Okay. It's not the market. All right. Let's look at our closed sales for May. May recorded 7,560 closings. That is up 455 closings month over month. Um, yet it is down 7% year over year. So it's the lowest May since 2014. And here's an interesting statistic for May. Cash is still king, you guys. 25% uh, of all May closings were cash. And of those cash, 14% of them we're below the 250K mark. So we're seeing cash is king at some of those higher price points. Um, we are also at, okay, our contract rate. This is important for sellers to know. In, uh, in all of May and coming into June, 46% of all of our contracts went under contract. So that again, it, we're right about 50%. So we're really right there in that middle point. Balanced market contract ratio, just so you guys know the definition of this a little bit better. It's the number of homes under contract relative to the number of available homes without a contract. So available versus what's under contract, we're sitting about 50-50. So, all right. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to share with you guys from our meeting. Uh, yes, 
just as a reminder to everyone, we are we're seeing a lot more of the um, iBuyer deals coming back to market. Not a ton, but enough to take notice of. Um, open door, offer pad, those kind of things. If your agent isn't talking to you about that, again, they're missing out. We do have options, including open door and offer pad, where you can still have your own representation. In fact, they're probably going to get you a better deal through some of those bigger companies. Um, but we also have private investors who will a lot of times beat these larger com companies um, in their offers in order to get their keep their businesses going. So if your agent's not talking to you about that, or if you didn't know that we do it on our team, yes, we do have cash offerings. We do have investor offers um, and we can help you through those as well. Why do people like those? Well, obviously, uh, choice. They get to choose when their move out date is certainty. They know that it's going to sell um, convenience. There's a lot of convenience about that. You don't have to show the house. You don't have to do repairs. You don't have to do all that. And, and the speed in which it happens. So you don't have to sit on the market for 60 days. You don't have to show your house for 60 days. So the, the, the statistics or the numbers are actually showing. So this, this might be something to consider as well. The consumers are giving up right now about $55,000. Yes, you heard me. 55K, $55,000 per transaction in order to have the choice, the convenience, the certainty, and the speed of what an iBuyer or an investment buyer offers, a cash buyer. So if that is something that you're interested in, absolutely, we provide those for our sellers just so you can know what it would look like. And um, if the number's right, it's a great option, you guys. If the number's not right, then we go to our traditional marketing plan and I can show you how to maximize the equity in your home. So you guys, that is really what is going on in the Arizona real estate market. Um, pleased to tell you that Keller Williams as a, an independent franchisee uh, was the number one franchise in the Valley this last month. So really excited about that. That's great. Um, and we're doing some great things over here in our office as well. So yeah, real estate's fun. Real estate's crazy. If you have any questions at all, I would encourage you to reach out to us. We are here to be a resource for you. Um, we want to, we want to answer those questions. There are no silly questions, just the ones that aren't answers or, or asked or silly. So please reach out to us. Let us know how we can help. If you're looking for a free property valuation, what do you think your home's worth right now? We'd love to help you with that as well. So please feel free to reach out to me directly. My phone number, 480-415-1341. Um, or you can go to our website where there's a whole bunch of information and tools over there as well. That is www.living. Four, eight, those are numbers, realestate.com. All right, you guys, thanks again for watching this video and we will see you next month for our market update.